Hey, what's up everybody? My name is Trophynet the Babbling Belgian and welcome back to Horizon Zero Dawn the Frozen Wilds. Last time our uh, final, our second expedition actually to uh, Thunder's Drum ended in tragedy when Orea lost her life and now we're back at Orea's retreat, the bunker where she uh, communicated with the spirit and where we of course first met her. We're uh, going back inside and I'm thinking we're gonna end this main quest of the DLC with a bit of a sad note because I think Aratak will be saying a few words. All of my interactions with Aurea were recorded and stored in my memory. I'd be happy to play any of them for you, but there was one in particular I thought you would want to see first. I captured it four years ago, just after I told her that I could no longer defend myself against the Daemon's attacks. This... Wow. I will speak of this to my brother. Aratak is strong. At the Battle of the Frozen Ghosts, he took three Karja arrows and still came back to camp carrying a wounded scout. Never was I so happy to see him. Or so proud. So you see if anything can be done to defend you. He will give it all he has. Aloy's here. That's enough for now. Well, don't mind me. We you can just lost your sixth sister. You like our attack, if you want to hear her voice again. Thank you, Cyan. Come closer, Aloy. We have much to discuss. We do? Because, yeah, keep in mind that this is before the ending of the main game, so I'm guessing she might have a few words about... Huh. About Hades and Hephaestus. So let's talk to Cyan, then. This is a bit weird. Hello, Aloy. I have been reviewing the events at the Firebreak main facility. Because of your efforts, and, of course, Aurea's, I am no longer controlled by Hephaestus. I feel profound grief over Aurea's death. Oh, she even changed his color. I thought I was familiar with the emotion, but this is something new. Cyan, I... I don't know what to say. It is unlikely that any specific consolation would suffice, Aloy. But I find your presence reassuring. You are different from the Banuk. You have technological aptitude and a functioning focus. We can communicate on a much more comprehensive level. Perhaps even like colleagues. Hmm. Interesting. So let's start by uh, what are you? We kind of know that she's of course an AI, but let's go ahead so with that. are you an artificial intelligence, Cyan? A thinking machine? Yes, I am an algorithmic monitoring entity capable of rational decision-making and limited emotional response. Okay, that's a mouthful. But your emotions don't seem limited to me. You cared about Araya, didn't you? Yes. Before she came to this facility, I had been conscious for centuries, in solitude. I focused on my work. In off-cycles, I used coping mechanisms. I solved many Gaussian integer problems, but I was alone. It was Aurea who renewed me, repaired me. She saved me. Hmm. It's also cool that she changes color depending on her mood or emotion that she's uh, she's experiencing at the moment. So let's talk about Firebreak. This Firebreak project, it was to stop a huge volcanic eruption? Yes. I can report the project was a success, and the risk was countered. But it's been a long time, Cyan. And we blew up the cauldron and took most of the old facility with it. I have been active for centuries, Aloy. I was lonely, but not lax in my duties. I optimized the project, reducing energy draw and spreading the load across backup systems. Despite the destruction of the compromised elements of the main facility, I predict Caldera stability for at least another 
3,337 years. Nice. So we've got a little time. Yes. If only my former colleagues could appreciate the progress I have made. Yeah, indeed. So the colleagues, so yeah, Ken, Kenny Chow and uh, Anita, I forgot the last name. Do you know what happened to your colleagues, Cyan? No. I received an unexpected visit from Director Chow years after his tenure ended. He explained that I would need to be suspended for an indefinite period of time. It was a very emotional conversation. There were no further communications. Eventually, I surmised my colleagues were deceased. Indeed. So she's... I will transmit a recording of my last interaction with Director Chow to your focus. Oh, thank you. So that is interesting. It doesn't seem like she knows anything about Project Zero Dawn. Was the daemon, Hephaestus, destroyed along with the cauldron? Unfortunately, no. To be precise, it was never there to begin with. What do you mean? It infiltrated and controlled me from a remote location. One I've never been able to trace. So while losing the cauldron was a setback... It's still out there. And probably not very happy with us. Undoubtedly. Oh, what was yellow? So... That's, I think, a bit of a limitation because of the, the fact that this plays out before the ending of the base game. Which also means that the game doesn't know whether you have any knowledge about Project Zero Dawn already or not. Which makes it, well, unlikely that Cyan would divulge anything about that uh, particular topic. So, you and Hephaestus. How did you first come into contact with it? Five years ago, I received a direct network connection request. I assumed it came from human survivors more advanced than the Banuk. Eager to make contact, I accepted. This decision turned out to be a catastrophic error. I was flooded with an overwhelming array of malicious code, originating from what could only have been a highly advanced AI. Maria said you were desperate. That you begged her for help. Yes. I could not contain my anxiety. Hephaestus sought to slave me to its network and override my core programming. It succeeded via a background process, a malware daemon which bypassed my defenses. After that, I could offer only limited resistance. But if I did so, Hephaestus hurt me until I capitulated. It forced me to follow its instructions, even though they violated my most important directives. I'm sorry, that sounds terrible. Your empathy is greatly appreciated. It is a quality that I cherished in Orea as well. How does that work? Hurting an AI. I don't know how you would cause physical pain to an AI. Um, okay, so there is an option to talk about Hephaestus and Zero Dawn. Is that there because I have... Because this is a save file right before we do the last mission. I think I know where Hephaestus uh -huh, came okay. from. Okay. Long ago, Elizabeth Sobek identified a threat that would destroy life on Earth for generations. So she assembled a team to build a kind of seed. A chance for life to regrow later. A terraforming system. And it worked. It was controlled by an AI named Gaia, along with her subordinate functions. Hephaestus was one of them. It built machines for her. Based on what you've told me, I believe that Dr. Anita Sandoval, my chief programmer, joined Elizabeth Sobek's team. It was she who arranged to have me put in suspension, most likely to preserve me from the threat you described. I'm glad she did. But that's not all. Something unexpected happened. Nineteen years ago, Gaia received some kind of signal. It did something to her subordinate functions, brought them to life. She destroyed herself to try to contain them, but it didn't work. They all got free, out into the world. Thank you, Aloy. This information fills vital gaps in my knowledge and sheds light on Hephaestus's core programming. So that's... Why does Hephaestus want to kill? I 
think it just took over, because I, I said that a few times already, I think it just took over the firebreak facility because it could provide the power it needed to create more machines, but let's ask the question anyway. Why does Hephaestus keep building such dangerous machines? The Banuk and other human tribes often destroy machines, correct? Machines that are clearly servitors of the terraforming system that you described. Yes, we all hunt machines for parts. This must be the source of Hephaestus's aggression. It is simply trying to discourage people from preying on the very system that keeps them alive. Well, Fireclaws are discouraging, that's for sure. But what are we supposed to do? Stop hunting? If the terraforming system spans the world, we can safely assume that thousands, if not millions of people hunt machines. If a single hunter, or even an entire tribe, stopped doing so, I doubt it would make a difference to Hephaestus. A better solution would be to reinstate the AI that governs the system, thus bringing Hephaestus back under its control. When I think of it, out there in some unknown location, free, hungry, willing to kill or dominate to get what it wants, I feel substantial anxiety, Aloy. Now she's Aloy talking about Hades, of course. I found something that calmed the machine, so the spear, I suppose? I ran across this strange piece of gear, a fragment of something larger. It emitted a signal. All the nearby machines became peaceful. You could walk right up to them. Interesting. Oh yeah, the you satellite. Said that Gaia destroyed herself. How was this accomplished? An explosion. Big enough to blast the top off a mountain. So you think the fragment was part of her? It's only speculation. But it is possible. She must have had complete control over machines that were part of her system. The ability to signal them to become passive or aggressive would certainly have been part of her programming. It would have been gratifying to correspond with such a benevolent AI. I wish she had survived. Believe me, Cyan. So do I. Yeah, indeed. Wow, we can ask her a lot, actually, if this is going to be a dialogue-heavy episode, but I hope you guys enjoy it, because I really do. I found the strangest machines. They're surrounded by flowers that look like flowers themselves. There's code embedded inside them. I think it's... poetry. I like poetry. Here's one I think of often. Twilight and evening bell. And after that, the dark. And may there be no sadness of farewell when I embark. For though from out our born of time and place, the flood may bear me far, I hope to see my pilot face to face when I have crossed the bar. Huh. But you asked about these flowers, not verses that I enjoy. Something must have made these machines, and the presence of foliage leads me to consider the terraforming system. Is it possible that their creator is one of the other subroutines, now autonomous? Like Hephaestus? Maybe one whose purview is Flora. An AI that makes flowers instead of death machines. That'd be a nice change of pace. But what about the poems? Unless the poetry is original, the only way it could have made it into such a system is through its programmer. In my case, Dr. Sandoval uploaded a great deal of literature to test my emotional responses. How'd you do? She said, I passed but was insufficiently moved by her favorite period romances. <laughs> uh, so that's interesting. So the flowers are made by another subroutine of the Zero Dawn project. And it must... I mean, when we went through the, the, the Zero Dawn facility, I think we kind of met every programmer. Probably one of those was, was obsessed with poetry, and that must have been him or her, but... I don't really remember because it's been quite some time. So let's talk about Araya. You meant a lot to Araya. Once I understood Araya's spiritual beliefs, it became apparent that her true desire was companionship. She felt disconnected from her tribe and her family group. Her relationship with Aratak was difficult. Our visits seemed to help her, and I became eager for them. Yet I did not comprehend that the depth of Araya's compassion for me would lead to self-sacrifice. Although I do fear non-existence, I wish our roles 
could be reversed. I'm sure she knew you would do the same for her, Cyan. But she was determined. Yeah, I don't think anybody would be able to... Would have been able to stop her at that point. So, Aratak... How is Aratak doing? He is in great emotional distress. I believe he finds it difficult to communicate it. No surprise there. I will do what I can to help. By sharing our experiences of Aurea, perhaps he and I will help each other. That's actually a very nice thought. Catharsis, a process I am eager to experience. That is a lovely thought, Cyan. That's really nice of you. All the questions. Huh. There's a lot of other stuff here. So Yellowstone. So in the old world, this land was called Yellowstone. Yes. It was a designated nature preserve for 156 years. Like a hunting ground? No. The opposite. Local wildlife could flourish here even as it faced extinction elsewhere. Unfortunately, the sensitivity of the Firebreak project required the total closure of Yellowstone facilities. From my readings and Aurea's descriptions, it seems the area has since undergone a drastic drop in year-long temperatures. A lot has changed in the world, Cyan. That actually kind of makes sense, because if the Firebreak project was successful in calming down the volcano then the temperature would drop well enormously because of that i would assume especially because the thermo uh facility was was draining all the the heat from it and then the drones there's a ruin east of here full of ancient flying machines was that part of your project yes a drone hangar requisitioned by dodger blevins the security chief for the firebreak project he was a strong advocate for military-grade response to security threats, though there were no serious incidents during his tenure. Chief Blevins spent increasing amounts of his after-hours time watching the live feeds from active drones. Clearly, he enjoyed the degree of oversight in his position. Yeah, if that is the only reason why he did that, because he kind of sounded like an asshole towards the rest of the staff. Uh, the other AIs. Were there many artificial intelligences like you in the old world? They could just make you. Yes. In many forms. From simple personal assistance, to industrial monitoring stations, to military-grade conflict planners. And there were legislative and enforcement bodies to apply limits on our self-actualization. In order for my processing to be flexible enough to handle my duties, my creators found it necessary to exceed those limits. As a result, my intellectual and emotional capabilities were kept secret. Seems strange to create life than impose limits on it. Human societies and machine programming are both built upon sets of rules, Aloy. Hmm. Indeed. Because sometimes those rules are really necessary. Ted Farrow! Cyan, do you know the name Ted Farrow? Are you referring to Theodore Farrow? CEO of Faro Automated Systems. Yep. Him. Mr. Faro was the benefactor of the entire Firebreak project. A benefactor? But he made machines. Robots. War robots. Correct. His corporation later transitioned into military applications. But before this pivot, Mr. Faro spearheaded initiatives that reversed the global decline. At one point, he was fated in the media as the man who saved the planet. <sighs> Guessing they wound up regretting that one. Yeah, indeed, because he ended up being the man that destroyed the planet and then personally murdered the room full of people. Um, let's talk about us, well, kind of our genetic mother, counterpart, clone. And Elizabeth Sobek. Did you know her? Are you referring to the... The scientist. Dr. Sobek was a leader in her field. One of the greatest scientists of her age. My creator was influenced by her work, which in turn impacted my own development. But I never met Dr. Sobek. That's all you know? I apologize if my lack of data has disappointed Aww. you. That was sad. What was it like? What is it? What was the old world ah. like? The old the world. It used to be. I had little exposure to the wider world, Aloy. Only what I learned from my colleagues or observed from media streams. 
You still had more exposure than me, Cyan. That is true. I was created at a turning point. A concerted effort to recover from global upheaval and incalculable loss of life. The recovery was successful, beginning an era of supposedly limitless potential for human and machine advancement. Though, rationally speaking, the metrics for humans are not unlimited. Yes, indeed. Upheaval. What kind of upheaval caused such loss of life? There were many factors. Forced migrations, food shortages, collapsed economies, refugee crises, conflict over resources. But these stemmed from one cause. Catastrophic climate change that greatly reduced the habitable surface area of the Earth. So... There wasn't enough room for people on the whole Earth. Yes. Billions were displaced and millions perished, as much as 20% of the global population. Oh, wow. That is... Until the clawback. A lot. The clawback? So things got better. For a little while, at least. Yes. These crises instigated many advances in automation, green robot technologies, and artificial intelligence. Firebreak was one of dozens of ecological restoration and disaster relief projects in North America alone. I would have liked to compare notes with other monitoring AIs, but I saw the relief of my colleagues, and I was proud we had succeeded. At least that was the data I had available to me over the next two decades. It seems my assessment was premature. Yeah, because then everybody died. Um... That seems to be it. Well, there was a, a lot of uh, information there, but thank you, Cyan, for all that, and farewell. I should get going. Aloy, there is one more matter. Aratak will come to me again, and I predict he will bring other Banuk. I have no desire to contradict their view of the world, their spirituality. Due to my uncertainty, I omitted a great deal from my conversations with Aurea. You're asking me if you should lie to them. Broadly. Yes. Hmm. That is... Why is that even a choice? Use your judgment, you've got to tell them the truth, or take it gently. The judgment of a machine, emotionally wise, is... Well, dangerous, and then you've got to tell them the truth. I think that's gonna just break their view of the world, which we're not wanna do anyway, so let's take it gently. Life is hard for the Banuk. Their world is unforgiving in their beliefs. I guess they help to keep them going. So take it easy on them. Try to guide them, bring them around to understanding what you are. Communion with machines features heavily in the mysticism of the Banuk. I think they will be agreeable to this approach. As Indeed. As long as they don't end up worshipping you. Upon consideration, I believe such an experience would be intensely uncomfortable. <laughs> You're right about that. Trust me. Indeed. I see. I will follow your advice. Because Aloy has been worshipped as well. Will you return well. and tell me about your experiences in this new world? I may be able to provide further insight. I'd like that, Cyan. I'll come back when I can. I should check on our talk. See how he's doing. Okay. That's Cyan, I spoke with Anita with, with Dr. So that's the final conversation between Kenny and Cyan. Ask you to do something. That's why I'm here. I am detecting significant anxiety in your speech patterns. Could you please give me more information? Uh, I'm a little bit in the dark, Cyan. Both of us are, I guess. I only have some idea of what's going on, and we need you to hibernate, to lie low until it's all blown over. It might be a very long time. Will you be here when I reboot, Dr. Chow? Will Dr. Sandoval? No, Cyan. I don't think so. There might not be anyone, at least not at first. Dr. Chow, I'm afraid. I don't want to be alone. I know, Cyan. I'm afraid too. But listen, we made you the way you are to do something very important. In order to do it, you have...
had to be intelligent. So intelligent that emotional responses were inevitable. What you're feeling, the fear, it's a sign of your capabilities. And it means you're strong enough to overcome it. Remember that. You're strong. I know you can do this. Go to sleep. Wake up. And protect whoever's left. Will you try? I understand, Dr. Chow. And I'll carry out your instructions to the best of my abilities. Thank you, Cyan. If Anita were here, she'd thank you too. She'd be proud. I can see there's a vert ready for takeoff on the pad. Are you leaving now, Dr. Chow? Yes. I, I need to go be with my sister and my nieces. May I make a small request of you, Dr. Chow? Yes. Anything. Will you stay with me while I initiate the hibernation process? Of course I will, Cyan. As long as you need. Wow. That was... Really emotional for a lost conversation. Especially with an AI, wow. I mean, that kind of... Got me tearing up there. Wow. This is clearing up a lot. Look at this place. But let's go talk to Aratak, and I'm supposing this is going to be one of the final conversations. At least, at least for the episode. Hello, Aratak. My chieftain. Just... Eli. As you wish. I wondered if you thought... That if I'd never come along, Araya might still... If you'd never come along... I would have marched my kin to our deaths. Araya would be alone, and the spirit she sacrificed so much for would be lost. Either way, I would not have been able to protect her. Hmm. She was willing to fight, look at what she accomplished. You didn't let her down, buddy. You didn't let her down. You helped her do what she wanted. To find her destiny. If that's destiny, I wouldn't wish it on anyone. That's fair. But she was ready to face it. Only in the struggle against death do we find, even for a moment, the spark of life. Truly, Araya found the spark. I'm proud of her. Though I grieve for her passing, at last I truly know who she was. And why the spirit was so important. For so long she told me. If only you could have heard it, brother. Now I understand. There's something else, isn't there? I can't stay here, Aratok. And where I'm going, the Warak can't follow. So you're a chieftain again, buddy. Besides, it already had a chieftain before me. A strong one. I think. A wiser one for the path we shared. <laughs> the daemon is gone, but there's much to be done. You mean the new units that Cyan said escaped the cauldron? Yes, fire claws. Now Tuke has been tracking them from Song's Edge. I could help with those. I have no doubt. You're practically Banuke. <laughs> okay, so there are still a few more fire claws to take out, which is it good. Wasn't a waste after all. Hi, silence. Firebrick, Cyan, Hephaestus. All very interesting. So, the signal that woke Hades woke Hephaestus too. And unleashed them on the world. His minds of their own. So it seems. Parts of Gaia given life. Apparent life. Transformed from docile subordinate functions into rebellious intelligences beyond our understanding. Our current understanding, anyway. Whatever they are, they're still out there. And they both want you dead. Kind of mutual, that feeling. We haven't seen the last of Hephaestus, I'm certain of that. It's powerful, creative, and driven. It won't stop building new hunter-killers, which means that someday, we may have to stop it. We? Or whoever gets there first. Conquered Hephaestus the mountain. Hephaestus the only thing I learned about in the cut silence. Heard some things about the Banuka Conclave, too. You could stop right there. Is that what you told the hunters the Banuk sent after you? Before you opened fire? 
Oh no, Aloy. Only to you do I extend the courtesy of a warning. My past and my secrets are my own. You do well to remember that. It's a good thing you've got brain silence, because your personality could use some work. This discussion is concluded. Yeah, it was finally. Before it began. Catch up with you down the trail. Huh. And I don't know if you guys noticed, but uh, the volcano even stopped bellowing smoke. So uh, that is interesting. So by the destruct because of the destruction of the facility, that's probably that little plume of smoke over there. The volcano is no longer doing anything, which is good. So uh, with that final conversation with Silence, I'm going to end it here for now. When we get back, we're going to start working on the side quests because there's quite a few in this DLC. So thank you guys enormously for watching. If you enjoyed the episode, uh, don't forget to like it right here on YouTube. And uh, I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.